Have you ever thought about where you would go if you were to die tomorrow? Do you believe that there is a heaven? Do you believe that you deserve to go to heaven? What if I told you that heaven is real and that there is only one way to get there? We cannot make it to heaven or the kingdom of God on our own. Humans have done wrong or bad things in their life. You and I both know this to be true about ourselves. No one is perfect and we cannot think we are perfect and deserve to go to heaven based on our own thoughts towards ourselves. No, that can't be true. Just because you think you're a good person that deserves to go to heaven when you die doesn't make that true. Do you know how I know this? Because Adolf Hitler thought he was a good person in his own mind and thought he was doing good by torturing millions of lives. Do you think he's deserving to go to heaven based on what he thought was a good thing to do? You and I both know for a fact that he doesn't deserve to go to heaven. Do not lie to yourself about that. So the question is, what makes you think you deserve to go to heaven by what you think can get you there? What can you do to go to heaven? Being a good person can't because everyone thinks differently about what's good. Hitler, for example. And if you can't make it to heaven on your own, if you were to die tonight, where would you go? In this video, I will point to you the only way to heaven. And that way is only by one name which is Jesus Christ. He is the only one who can save you. He is the only way to the kingdom of God because he is God himself and he loves you so much that he came down from his kingdom in heaven to live like a human, to endure what we go through as humans, to show us that he relates to our feelings, both good and bad. And most importantly, that God died on a cross for all the bad things of anyone who calls upon the name, his name, the name of Jesus Christ, that whoever believes that God died in the human form for their sins will be saved. This is the light for you in a dark place. This is the message of salvation, which is the only way to make it to heaven and live in eternal paradise in the kingdom of God. This channel is here to serve as a beacon of hope, to guide you to the light of Jesus our Savior to point you to the truth in the storm of this wicked and dark world. The truth not only is Jesus, but the words spoken by him. These words are in the Bible. God's word tells us who he is, why he made us, what we did to ourselves to distance ourselves from him, and how he is always calling out to us and wanting to pull us back to him. But he loves us enough to give us the choice to believe in him and his message to us about how to live in eternal paradise. I want to point you to the good news in the Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, it says, For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. This is the simple gospel in which we believe in order to be saved. His life, death, and resurrection. These two verses give a beautiful summary of the whole story about what Jesus did for us, for our sins. Who is Jesus? If you do not know who Jesus is, I want to take a brief moment to describe to you who Jesus is according to the Word of God, the Bible. In the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. This is talking about Jesus. Jesus was God, and the Word was God. We move on to John chapter 1 verses 14, and it says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of truth. So what must you do to be saved? In Acts chapter 16, 
verses 31, it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In Romans chapter 3, verses 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Humans were born children of sin. In Psalm 51, verses 5, it says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. We also had used our free will to sin. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verses 20, it says, But there is not a just man on the earth who does good and does not sin. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 8, it says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Only by believing in Jesus can we be forgiven of our sins. It is sin that separates us from God. Sin without forgiveness in Christ leads to eternal condemnation. In John chapter 3 verses 18 through 21 it says, He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, and they have been done in God. Those who believe in Jesus are written in the book of life and are saved, and they go into eternal life. In the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 46, it says, And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. But these who are not found in the book of life get cast down into the lake of fire. In Revelations chapter 20, verses 15, it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is referring to hell, an eternal state of being away from God, where the conscious will be seared for all of eternity of all the chances, all the opportunities they had to come to know Jesus personally and accept him as a savior. But those who don't accept him as a savior now must live not only in a physical realm of pain in a lake of fire, but even worse, a mental state of agony, knowing that all the voices of every person who came to them sharing the light of the gospel of Christ is now running through their head for all of eternity. So the biggest pain that that person in hell is gonna feel is eternal mental agony of the voices of those that came to them with the light of the gospel of truth about Jesus Christ. The people that they rejected here on earth, the people that God sent to them here on earth to share the good news with them, and they rejected them. These voices of the people that they heard and rejected on earth will be that in the voices they will hear for all of eternity in eternal condemnation in the lake of fire. This will be the most painful thing that anyone can ever experience is the fact that they had a choice, a free will chance to know the love of God and rejected it. And they will remember that for all of eternity as they are in the lake of fire, distant from God, who has given eternal life to those who believe in them. If you have any conviction in your heart and mind, all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ to be saved. He will save you from your sins. Pray and ask Jesus Christ into your life. Allow him to start working on what he has planned for you from the beginning of time. If you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart and life, then I invite you to say this prayer. God, Jesus, I don't know what to say or think on the sin in my life. I see the way that this world is going, and I don't want the broken promises that this broken-hearted world is offering me. I don't want to live for myself, thinking that somehow I am a good person that deserves to go to heaven, when deep down inside I know this is not true. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me for all of the wrong things and thoughts in my life. I put my trust and hope in you. I believe that you are the savior of the world. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I give my life to you, Jesus. Take control of my life. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ as my Lord and savior, amen. If you pray this prayer with a truthful and meaningful heart, 
you are now born again in the family of God's children. Continue to pray or talk to our Savior Jesus and allow him and his spirit to work on you. You have now put your trust and faith in him. Don't expect things to happen. Just allow God to work on his timing for you. All you have to do is be patient with your faith and trust in him. Continue to watch these videos and start to read the Bible. I'm going to make a short video for you on where to start with the Bible. God bless you in the name of Jesus. And welcome to the start of an amazing journey with God. Thank you.